So this is David, and uh, we're looking into David's left eye. And uh, open this up here. We got a nice, nice big pupil here. And as I move my focus a little further back, we should see our floater come into view right there. Okay. So uh, with your right eye, I'm gonna kind of follow that light down there a little bit. So, to the patient, this would look like a very large, or relatively large, dense spot moving around in the vision. Make sure I got good lighting on this for the camera. There we go. And you can kind of get a sense that there's some thin, sort of transparent, plasticky sheets that are connected to it. Well, uh, he has had a posterior vitreous detachment, so this sort of plasticky membrane has peeled away from the back of the eye. This density which is called a Weiss ring, uh, pre-existed. It was, it's been sitting dormantly and quietly on his optic nerve for probably his entire life, and uh, now it's pulled away with that little membrane. That transparent membrane is probably not very symptomatic and is actually not something you know, very treatable, so I don't feel like I really need to do much to it. But this density here is casting a really uh, distinct shadow. Um, what doesn't show up very well in the camera are these two red beams. If I dim the lights way down, you can get a sense that there are these two red beams that uh, I use to confirm my focus. I can see it better than it shows up on the laser. And um, so uh, what I do is I focus that on the front surface there and, uh, and fire the laser and boom, there's our first shot. And you see it kind of dance around a little bit and start to, start to open up and kind of break up a little bit. It's a lot of movement, so each, each shot of the laser I have to kind of chase it down again. Change the energy settings there. You can see it's starting to kind of break up and kind of change, so a little bit better energy on that. Yeah. And so the laser does tend to kind of push things back a little bit. We're nowhere near the retina, so we're in a very nice safe zone to treat. But at some point, I'll probably have David move his eye and we'll kind of jog that thing back into a little bit better position because the energy is always going to be better towards me, closer to the front of the eye than further back. And so as I fire, you'll see these little bubbles quickly move upwards and that is the laser <coughs> um, kind of vaporizing, sublimating the solids into gases. Once they've been converted to gases, they don't come back. They just kind of, kind of go, go up to the top of the eye and then they'll linger around 15, 20 minutes or so and then just basically just dissolve and disappear. Okay, let's move it forward here. Let me have you look down. Hold that and then quickly back to the light there. Hold that. And, uh, yeah, moved upwards there and came forward a little bit. Being pretty cooperative. It's definitely breaking up, getting smaller. So what you can expect when we're done here is well I've been shining a bright light in the eye, and it's just mm -hmm. like if you were to look at a mm -hmm. at a flashlight for a little while and then take the flashlight away, the vision's gonna be dim. It mm -hmm. takes a little while for your rods and cones of the retinal cells to kind of you know dark adapt again. So immediately when you pull away from here, the vision will be gray and dim. Mm -hmm. That's normal. That mm -hmm. takes uh, a few to several minutes to mostly recover from, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, it's important to tell people in advance so that they don't get a little panicky. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's that. And then as that recovers, you're going to see a lot of little dark things down in your lower field, down towards mm -hmm. your feet. Mm -hmm. Those are the gas bubbles mm -hmm. sitting uh, quietly at the roof of the eye, just minding their own business there. Well, the ga even though they're gas bubbles, they tend to cast little dark shadows. It's mm -hmm. just the way the optics are. So you'll see a bunch of little dark things, and you'll think that that's, that's floater debris. No, it's not. Those are bubbles. They're round. They're clustered together. They form like little great clusters. And then over the course of 15, 20, 30 minutes or so, they'll just basically sort of disappear without, without a bang, just with a whimper. They'll just kind of just dissolve mm. and go away. Mm. And then uh, thirdly, uh, as far as recovery, 
is you'll be dilated. You'll be dilated for three or four or five hours or so. Mm -hmm. And while the pupil is widely dilated, you're not going to really be able to uh, assess what I've done. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as soon as this evening, uh, because there's really no healing involved. I'll make sure your chin is down head far. There you go. There's really no healing involved. So it's not like you have to go through a phase of, of you know, healing and recovery mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. therapy and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, it's, what's done is done, and mm -hmm. uh, when the pupil is back down to normal again, you'll have a pretty good idea of what you're doing. But uh, as, you know, you can see as I go through this, there's always like little specks here and there. I get, try to get whatever I can, but you know, probably there'll be some that might drift back centrally. So it wouldn't surprise me. In fact, I'd expect to see you again. Uh, you know, we could do it as soon as the next day, but we could also, there's no timeline as well. Mm -hmm. uh, for those that are local like yourself, you know, mm -hmm. giving it a few, several days or so, is, there's mm -hmm. no harm or shame in that. Mm -hmm. Come back, we'll just dilate, uh, get in there and clean up a little bit, selectively clean up. And I think probably two treatments with you. This is going to be the main one. This is going to be the bulk of it. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe just a little cleanup uh, should take care of most of the rest here. And I think that's all we'll have to do. The nice thing about these types of floaters, as I said earlier in the consultation, is they don't come back. You know, you don't have more of them. This is not part of a progressive degenerative process. It pre-existed. It peeled away from the back of the eye and then moved to a place where it's symptomatic. So if I can definitively get rid of this, it's done, shouldn't come back shouldn't need you know more treatment uh, at least that you know that particular floater mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully be kind of definitively done ah, I think we're done mm. I think we're done we get a big broad overview here there's the optic nerve where it started off there there's the macula the central most important part of the retina we back off there in that area where the floater was now is not. A little bit of that plasticky sheet stuff. We're going to leave that alone. And something there. Yeah, alright, I think we're done. All right. Very good. Come on.